Welcome to Corizant Technologies, home of the Digital Executive Podcast. Do you work in emerging tech, working on something innovative, maybe an entrepreneur? Apply to be a guest at www.corizant.com forward slash brand. Welcome to the Digital Executive. Today's guest is Dr. Hanny Demian. Dr. Hanny Demian is a physician innovator and CEO focused on advancing regenerative health, performance medicine, and the next generation spine and musculoskeletal care. Board certified and fellowship trained, he is the founder of Presentia and the CEO of the Biospine Institute, where his work integrates evidence-based medicine with cutting-edge technologies, including AI-driven diagnostics, data-guided rehabilitation systems, and minimally invasive biological treatments. Well, good afternoon, Dr. Demian. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon, Brian. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, my friend. I appreciate it. And you're hailing out of Florida. I'm in Kansas City. We're just an hour apart time-wise, so I appreciate that. I know it's hard to get on calendars and sync. So, Dr. Demian, let's jump into your first question. You often speak about transforming how we treat chronic pain. Could you walk us through your shift from traditional pain management towards regenerative and biologic therapies, and what triggered that change? Brian, this is one of the questions that I consider it's a, it's a passion project in my life. I've been managing chronic pain for the past 20 years and patients keep coming back. So you kind of get tired of just treating them, managing them, and they come back in a month or two or three. So I decided why can't we do more for our patient a few years back and how can I actually get those patients to reach their main or maximum potential? So I get tired of the management and I start looking into treatment. What can I do to treat the patient? Is it surgery? This is why I looked for the best and I found it here in Florida by a spine institute where they do minimally invasive and we evolved to microinvasive through five millimeter surgery. But you know what? Some patients didn't even want surgery. They couldn't get better with traditional pain management, which is injection, a cortisone injection, a pill, go have some stretches and physiotherapy. And they refused to have surgery or they're not ready for having surgery. So I decided to look deeper and out of selfishness, by the way, I'm a chronic pain patient. I have uh, neck pain, back pain. And like we were talking before the podcast, I have shoulders and knee pain as well. So I decided to look deeper because I refused to surgery myself. So I looked into peptides, stem cells and regenerative medicine. And I found honestly the future of chronic pain treatment, where you can treat the cause, why the cells are breaking down, why we're ending up with arthritis in our spine, and why the spinal cord get compressed or have any kind of injuries. And we're able to fix it now on a cellular level, reverse that process altogether, and get the patient back to their normal activity and normal life without surgery and without needing to use cortisone injection or pills. So we were able to restore and regenerate their spine and joints through regenerative medicine. That's awesome. I, and that gives hope for everybody. And you're right, we, you and I both talked before we hit record on the podcast and we both had some, some injuries and sort, those sorts of things that plague us. So I appreciate that you really are passionate. You really want to help the world be a better place and take pain away from your patients, which is awesome. awesome. And I like these regenerative options. And we're going to dive in a little bit more to that. So Dr. Demian, your cl- your clinics integrate technologies like AI-driven diagnostics, data-guided rehabilitation systems, and minimally invasive biological treatments. What are the most exciting recent advancements in those areas and how are you applying them at your clinic level? AI has been great to us for the past several years. We start using it through you know, the normal administrative work, billing, booking, and whatnot. But I always thought, you know what, that's not what AI all about. Why can't we get it facing the patient and not facing us, right? So we looked into it and we start using it into diving deeper into the patient data. We've got a lot of patient data since we opened our doors 10 years ago. Who did what and what kind of lifestyle our patient were leading that ended up having them to come to our clinic, get injured, whether it's not exercising, not sleeping and whatnot. So we decided to start looking into this deeply 
humans possibly couldn't gather all this information and dive and see the really mild differences. So start using it into analyzing this data and predicting what patient will get back pain, shoulder pain, injuries and whatnot, and what are their habits. That wasn't sufficient. So we decided to use a little bit more of current data through wearables. So we're currently trying to analyze most of the wearables, whether it's Apple, Whoop, or Aura. We take all the information, whether it's heart rate, we know it's very closely related to pain. If you're having pain, heart rate will go up. Sleep, you probably wouldn't sleep much if you're having chronic pain or sleep disruptions, you will end up with chronic pain and vice versa. So sleep is close, closely related. Diet, heart rate, respiratory rate, stress levels, all this, we collect this, put it through AI, and AI is able to tell us what patient is actually suffering from pain, what patient will develop pain. Combine this with genetics, genomics, and epigenetics, looking at the habits of the patient himself, whether they are taking enough supplements, eating properly, not eating properly, and how fast their organs, specifically the spinal cord, and how much inflammation they have in their system, combining this, putting it through AI, will be able to predict outcomes for our treatment and will be able to predict further what patient will end up with a spine pain or joint pain, osteoarthritis or whatnot, depending on their arthritis and habits as well. So this is what we've been working on and it's quite exciting. It's not only us, by the way, Brian, AI has been involved recently in predicting heart attacks. And this is where the information or the idea came from. If I can predict heart attacks, depending on all those factors, 10 years ahead, right? And I'm lucky Florida where I live is the first hospital that predicts this. It's called Cardio AI and, and they just announced it. Cardio AI and inflammatory AI, where you can predict the inflammation in the arteries. This is where all the idea come. If we can predict that you can have spinal cord pain 10 years from now, why can't I prevent it? So this is what we've been working on and we're very excited. That's awesome. I like your vision, Dr. Demond. You really, as an innovator in your practices and your clinics, the vision you have to leverage some of this emerging technology, AI has really helped you with your workflows, a lot of analyzation, or I'm sorry, analysis and prediction of of you just talked about some of those other ailments that people have, but I really like the one with cardio AI. And I know that's going to be so important for people that have cardio issues. So I appreciate that. And Dr. Damien, in musculoskeletal and spine care, there has historically been a strong divide between rest and medication, invasive surgery and physical therapy. How do you see the role of regenerative medicine, for example, stem cells, PRP, peptides, et cetera, and minimally invasive treatments changing that model? If I will be able to travel 10 years from now, Brian, I think we'll find spine injuries, spine pain, osteoarthritis declining to the point that we're not going to need pain clinic in the near future. If I'm able to detect, determine the factors in your life, your habits, your genetics that can cause all this, I think we'll be able to prevent it with giving the body what it needs from stem cells, PRP, platelet-rich plasma, nutrients, supplements that the body will need, whether it's going to fix their DNA on a cellular level, whether it's going to influence the cell to do its job and reach its potential. Combining that with probably will still have accidents, injuries of some sort. If we can treat those properly from day one and not lag for six months to a year, looking around and doing resting and doing physiotherapy and chiropractor, not saying that they don't have a, a role. My physiotherapy I was treating my shoulder is, is the best guy that helped me through my recovery. But I think we'll be able to prevent this. I, we, I think we'll be able to provide the body, especially after a cellular breakdown at age of 40, that we'll be able to prevent, restore, and regenerate the cells on the cellular level, not only ma mask it or put a Band-Aid on it. So I truly believe 10 years from now, we will see people in the streets without walkers, people without canes, and people without wheelchair. Very little. It will be 
the exception and not going somewhere and finding a lot of people with such injuries. So I, I, I truly believe that it's a movement that we're all backing me and other doctors like Andrew Huberman and Peter Artea and others are pushing forward for this. So honestly, I see in the near future, less than 10 years from now, people will be able to deal with this, prevent it and restore their function. That's amazing. I like how you're looking ahead again, being a visionary. It, it would be so nice to hear that there's no more pain clinics in the next 10 years, wouldn't it? You know, just using therapies like stem, stem cells, you mentioned PRP, et cetera. True healing here at the core, not just these masking and pain meds that we all see. And, and Dr. Demi and I worked in healthcare for many, many years on the technology side. So I, I saw a lot of this. And so I appreciate what you're doing. And last question of the day, Dr. Demian, looking ahead, maybe five, 10 years, how do you envision spine and muscle skeletal care evolving? For example, will AI-based imaging and diagnostics reshape how we screen and intervene early? Will generative therapies become a first-line approach? I believe, Brian, 10 years from now, we'll be able to reverse people's habits. And going back to that, I truly believe that aging will be an option. It will be a condition that we can stop, reverse, or totally get out of it. Aging will be a process that we look at it. I said, I don't want to age. So what should I do? And this is actually the title of my book that's coming out next spring, that at, there are stuff that we can do in our twenties by reducing junk food, sleeping properly, eating properly. And you can see the new generations are doing that, right? One of the stats that really blow my mind that in the twenties, twenties, right? 70% decline in alcohol drinking. So you can see where it's coming from and 60% decline in reduction in eating junk food. I remember in my twenties, I was smoking, eating junk and drinking. That's all movement is gone and people are more tuned into their health now. So I believe that we'll be able to reverse all these habits at the age of 20, 30, 40. So when people come to the critical age of 40 and 50, they will be healthy. They will have better habits. They will be able to look into their cellular, will be able to go into any clinic, get a cellular map. What are my cells doing? What cells are not functioning properly? And we'll take the supplements, whether it's through infusions, whether it's through lifestyle modification, and we'll be able to fix their back. They will be able to reverse aging on all levels, whether it's cosmetic, skin, muscle, bone, collagen, Right, we'll be able to do all this, adding quite a bit of stem cells. It's your own body, and I've seen the results. Stem cells treating autoimmune conditions now, treating inflammation, treating heart. It's it's unbelievable. We are seeing now treating leukemia and chronic conditions with stem cells now. So, I think the future is here. Right, we're not just predicting now. We can touch it, feel it. And our regenerative medicine, peptides, exosomes will be able to influence the cell to recover, restore, and regenerate itself, influence its behavior for people to really, really restore and push against a condition like aging. The problem will be that we're going to be living so healthy, we'll be living really good life. What should we do next? Not fighting chronic condition at age of 40 and 50, like we're doing now, I think that will be coming very soon, Brian. Thank you. I appreciate that. Again, your prediction, and, and you're already seeing some of that because you're using some of these regenerative therapies, but I like what I'm hearing. You'll be able to stop, maybe reverse the aging process. Obviously, there needs to be some drastic health habit changes earlier in life, especially but I like the stem cell therapy and that could be the answer to the aging process. So I really appreciate that. And Dr. Damien, it was such a pleasure having you on today and I look forward to speaking with you real soon. I really appreciate it, Brian, and I'm looking for the future and you're doing a great job by actually spreading this anti-aging and regenerative. So thank you for having me and hope to speak soon. Bye for now. 